911. Yeah, I just, uh, just. Do you need medical aid or police? My father's worst. You what? Sin. I just committed a father's worst sin. This is the story of a Washington father who had done the unthinkable as his family was sound asleep. He says he did something that he will regret for the rest of his life. What did he do, you may ask? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome to our channel. This is Criminal Activities. Michael League from Puyallup, Washington, was 69 years old at the time of the crime. He had a son named Dennis League who was 46 years old and a daughter named Daniela Fawcett who was 43. Michael was married to a lady named Joanne and he had two grandsons who were the ages of six and seven. These two boys were the sons of Dennis who lived with him, but he also had a daughter that will be mentioned later on who did not live with him. Dennis and his two boys, Daniela, Michael and Joanne all lived under the same roof when the unthinkable happened. The day the 911 call was placed, it was the morning of March 24th, 2013. Michael and Joanne had returned home from an out-of-town trip to Ocean Shores when they found out their son and daughter had a violent altercation. The police had been called to the residence, and Michael had enough of the issues, considering this has been one time out of many that the police were called to his home. Later that night, he waited until everyone was asleep before he did something he says he will forever regret. He entered into his daughter's bedroom, covered her head with a pillow to muffle the sound, not to wake his wife or grandsons, and fired his 22 caliber handgun at Daniela. He then went downstairs, where his son was asleep on the couch, covered his head with the same pillow, and pulled the trigger. Despite all of the chaos going on, the grandsons were sleeping with the grandmother the time of the murder and were unharmed. At about 3.27 a.m. Sunday morning, Michael called 911. 911. Yeah, I just, uh, I just... Do you need medical aid or police? My father's worst. You what? <laughs> I just committed a father's worst sin. Okay. I just shot my daughter in the head and my son in the head. Okay, what is your address? Uh, uh I had to put them out of their misery. Okay, where are you at, Get sir? rid of their demons, and I'm going to have to shoot myself. Okay, sir, are you armed? I, I can't hear you. Well, I need your address, please. Uh, uh, Sir, what is your address? Uh, Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, one five zero nine Fifth Street Southeast. Okay. What? Do you have a weapon? There. Do you have the gun now? Yes, I do. Okay. That, uh, uh, it's all because of alcohol and drugs. You're in? Family apart. Okay. Is, is, my son has two, my son has two little boys upstairs asleep and my wife is asleep. Okay, so there's more people in the residence? Yes, they're asleep. And you said that there's children in the residence? Yes, two of my son's little boys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what's what's your name? My name is Michael. Michael, what's your last name? League. <laughs> okay, Michael. Is your is your son and daughter? Are they just Beg your pardon. Okay. What? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. You said you've been drinking tonight? No, not me. 
Yeah, my wife and I have a, had a good marriage for almost 40, 48 years. It's our kids and our grandkids, the older grandkids, are the ones been doing the drugs and the drinking. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, Michael. I'm oh, oh, Jesus, for years we did. My wife and I have been suffering with depression and anxiety. <laughs> oh. Hold on one second, Michael, for me. Stay on the line. I don't want you to hang up. Okay, Michael, what what room are you in right now? I, I'm sorry, I can't understand you. What room are you in right now, Michael? I'm in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen. I'm going to have to shoot myself. No, I'm asking you, Michael, I'm asking you if you can put the gun down for me. The guy set the gun down. You're setting the gun down? The gun set down, yes. Okay. What kind of gun do you have? I can't take this anymore. My wife and I went away for three days. We come back Friday. And the cops had been called. And my, I guess my daughter had, had tried to attack my son with a knife. And he hit her. And the cops were there. And, okay. And, and my daughter's two grand. My daughter's two sons are staying at the. Okay. He's at a motel down the street. Oh God. I just want to make sure you. You well, we're gonna get somebody that can. Her. I'm gonna get somebody that can talk to you and maybe get and get you some help. Okay? I just want to make sure that you said that you put the, that you did put the gun down. <laughs> No, no, I gotta shoot myself before they get here. No, Michael, I'm, I'm asking you that you don't do that. I'm asking that you just oh stay on the phone with me and talk to me. Oh God, what I do, what I What do. kind of gun do you have? No, it's a Ruger. So I have a bad, it's 22. Have you picked uh, it? Do you still do you have I'll it again? It. Huh? Do you have the Do you have the firearm again? Yeah, it's sitting right here by me. But it's set down, correct? Yes. Okay. The cops have been here, so many dead. My grandkids are stole brothers. And stole Are your grandkids in the residence? Is that the, the two children you were talking about? No, no, they're just little boys. They're slick, six and seven. Oh, they're sleeping upstairs. Put my wife is asleep. Okay. Oh, my God. At least I got rid of their demons. Oh, God. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to shoot myself. Okay, Michael, I I don't want you to do that, though. I want you to stay on the line, and I want you to talk with me, okay? And I'm going to see if we can get you some help. I can hear my son moaning. I got to, I'm probably going to have to go shoot it again. No. I got to put him out of his misery. Oh, my what? God. Okay. So do you think that uh, he's still breathing? Yes, I think he is. Oh, God. What room is he in? <laughs> The living room is on the couch, and my daughter is upstairs in the bedroom. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Uh, Do you have a cordless phone, Michael? I have a what? Are you on a cordless phone right now talking with me? Uh, a cordless line. I'm I, on a regular telephone. You're on a telephone? It's not a, it's not a cordless phone? You can't. Yes, it's a cordless it is phone. a cordless phone. Yeah. So you're able. Are you still in the oh kitchen? Oh my God! Get the get some ambulances here. Get okay. Here. The door's unlocked. Is it okay? Oh my the, God! The front the front door is unlocked. The front door is unlocked. I'm, I got to have to shoot myself. I guess. No, Michael, I want, I want you to... Too many years. Michael, I, I don't want you to harm yourself. I want you to stand in line and talk with me, okay? Oh, yeah. 
Okay, Michael, I'm going to give you some instructions that I want you to listen to, okay? I want to make sure that you have the gun and you set it down. Or you set the gun down, okay? And then I want you to go... I want you to go out front because there's officers there that, that are going to talk to you, okay? And then we can get you get some help that you need, okay? And get your son some help. Can you do that for me? I want to die, but I want to die. Michael, can you can yeah. you do that for me? Can you go to the front door? Make sure you you don't have the you don't have the gun in your hand and go contact the officers yes, at the I will. front. Oh, well. Are you going to the front door now? Just yeah, I'm gonna put my jacket on. I'm shaking like a leaf. Okay, so you're gonna put your jacket on. I want to make sure that you have nothing in your hands, okay? Yes. Yes. Let me yes. let me know when you're going to the front door so I can yes. let them know too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Are you the going? The gun's to sitting on the counter here in the kitchen. Okay. The gun is on the counter. Okay. That's that's good. Are you yeah. going to the front door door now? Yeah, I'm walking to the front door now. He's walking to the front door. <laughs> Okay. Just, dude, I gotta get something. My nose is feeling like crazy. I gotta find something. Okay. I gotta find something. We'll we'll get you something for oh, that. I find First, I want you to go to the to the front door like you were that like you were doing. Okay. Oh, I gotta use some toilet paper. Oh. Are you are you still oh, going to the front door? Oh my son, we tried to get help for him. We tried to get help for him. The little boys, the little boys, they they need your child like so bad. <laughs> Are you going to the front door, Michael? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, Where are you I at now? I have no weapon on me. I have no weapon on okay. me. Uh, I have no weapon on me. Okay. Uh, yes, no. Uh, Let me know I when you're no at the front door, okay? Uh, okay, I'm at the front door. He's at the front door. Do what the police say, okay?
say, say where, like, where they would be, up or down? Or? And you shot them? Yeah. Okay, guys, break that line up. Break that fucking line up. Let me go ahead, go ahead. We got, we got, we got a, a, supposedly we have two shots. We have a woman inside with two babies. Okay? Reach that door, we're going to call her out. Alright? We get a name. What's her name, Nate? What's her name, Nate? Hey, police department, anybody home? Not going in. Police department, anybody home? Law enforcement arrived and had Michael exit the home. 
He was then taken into custody. Police searched around at the crime scene to discover the victims were still breathing, but unresponsive. Both were transported to the trauma center at Tacoma General Hospital, but both died in a short time after. Reportedly, Danielle lived for only a few short hours after, while Dennis died four days later relying on life support. The grandchildren were transported to the Pua Loop Police Station and then to Child Protective Services. Michael's wife was apparently unaware of the shooting. She told police that a while ago, her husband said, I should just shoot him, shoot us all. But she did not take the statement seriously at the time. It is said that Michael was having an extremely hard time having his son and daughter there under the same roof as him. He decided killing his son, daughter, and himself was the only one way to resolve family issues, according to documents. Dennis and Daniela were allegedly disrespectful to their parents in multiple ways. Daniela was a schizophrenic who abused drugs, and Dennis was a violent alcoholic. Now, I don't want to talk wrongfully about the unliving, but this is what was said in court about Dennis and Daniela. Family members told the judge that the two put their father and mother through years of physical abuse, constantly stealing money and prescription medications from the couple. Fueled by drugs and alcohol, the police were called to the home dozens of times. Michael and Joanne would take care of Dennis and Danielle. They gave them a place to stay, on top of taking them to their appointments, have their mental health visits for them in their home, rehab and treatments, but in return, had been abused. The time of the court proceeding, family and friends came to Michael's defense, calling the living situation a living hell. Dennis's daughter Kayla told the court, one day he'd be my dad and the next day he wouldn't. I didn't understand it was alcohol and it just scared me growing up. She told the judge she doesn't want her grandfather to serve any prison time, even though he killed her father. She said, I don't think he should be in here or any of this. He couldn't take it and I just want him back home. Michael League's wife echoed that sentiment. She told the judge he was pushed over the edge. I would hope you would show leniency, she said. We have to live with this for the rest of our lives, so the sentence is already there permanently. Claiming her husband suffered from illnesses also, she begged the judge for mercy. Before Michael was sentenced to what the judge saw as fit, Michael stated, I do not cry for myself. I cry for my children, my wife, my family, and my friends. I take full responsibility for what I did. I loved my children when they were born. I love them now, and I always will love them, no matter what happened. I will never forget my children, and I will live to regret what I did for the rest of my life. The prosecutor wanted a 15-year sentence for each murder to run one after the other, 30 years total, but Judge Gerald Johnson disagreed. Gerald said murder is wrong, but the children provoked it. The judge said League must serve some prison time for taking two lives, so he handed down a five-year total sentence. He said, there was a pattern, certainly of emotional abuse and physical abuse to some extent. There was a pattern of theft and deception and emotional abuse that very few could probably tolerate over the years. The court does find, to a significant degree, the victims, both of them, provoked this incident. But I wanna know your opinion on this case. Did Michael Lee do the unforgivable by taking the lives of his two children? Or is it justified by what all they had done to Michael over the years? I'd love to hear from you in the comment section. This is Criminal Activities signing off. Stay safe out there.